Hey guys, so we are back and we are talking about the first book in the Lux series, which is Obsidian. Um, Obsidian, Obsidian by Jennifer Armentrout. So <laughs> I told you last time for Shadows, which is the prequel to Lux, um, that this is my favorite series. Uh, Damon is one of my book boyfriends and I love him madly, truly deeply. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously, since it's Jennifer Armentrout and it's my favorite series, it's five stars. Uh, right off the bat, there is, I will tell you, there's no smut. There's plenty of steam and plenty of sexual tension, but there's no smut. Uh, like I said, five stars. The main characters are Katie and Damon. This is about aliens. I know, just read the book anyway. They are, there are good aliens, bad aliens. So the good aliens are the Lux. The bad aliens are the Aram. So Katie is a senior in high school. She moves to West Virginia with her mom and meets the kids next door, which is Damon, who's a class A douche of the highest order, um, who's also incredibly smoking hot. <laughs> and then his sister, Dee, who is... I wrote, she's cotton candy because Dee is just light and effervescent and beautiful and she's just a wonderful person. He tries to scare her off because of what happened with Bethany and Dawson. Uh, she and Dee become friends anyway. <laughs> she and Damon become frenemies. Uh, there's like a lot, like I said, there's a lot of sexual tension between them. Some things happen. Uh, Katie ends up with a trace on her and she has to hang out with Damon because he has to keep her safe because she has a trace on her to keep Dee safe from the Aram. Uh, there are run-ins with the Aram where Damon saves Katie and Katie saves Damon. Uh, and there are sparks between the two of them. A lot of sparks. <laughs> There's a big to-do at the end a battle and some other things. And there is actually this very beautiful, real moment between Kat and Damon. And then the next day the spell is broken <laughs> because it's Damon <laughs> and he can't help himself, I think, sometimes. <laughs> so Damon and Katie like become connected because of what happens. And Damon thinks they should be together, and Katie thinks they should not. And Damon says he loves the challenge, and Katie flips him off. And that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the city. <laughs> that's the review. That's the review. So, the recap, obviously, will have more details. And that is now. That is the spoilers, if you haven't read it. It's an amazing series. If you haven't read it, read it. Okay, spoilers time. So, Catherine, a.k.a. Cat, a.k.a. Katie, a.k.a. Kitten, as the case may be, because Damon likes to call her Kitten because he says um, she's like a little kitten that's pissed off with its hair standing up on it. <laughs> she has light brown hair and gray eyes. Damon is over six feet tall and has black hair and green eyes, dark hair and green eyes. So, Cat grew up in Florida and her dad died three years ago from cancer. So, her mom decides she wanted a new start and moves them to West Virginia, right next door to some aliens. Yeah. Katie's mom is a nurse uh, who works in the local hospital, and I think she works at the other hospital. I don't know. She, she works a lot. And uh, it's the summer before school starts. Katie's mom is, like, trying to get her to go next door and make friends with the kids next door. Katie decides to take her mom's advice and ask them for directions to the grocery store. Because this is pre, this book was written pre-GPS. And if you don't remember those times, then God bless you. Because you used to have to have a road atlas and maps for every city you went to. And it was a pain in the butt. <laughs> so, she goes next door to ask for directions. Uh, a completely hot guy answers the door with no shirt on. And poor Katie is like speechless because... Katie is like a nerdy book girl. She writes a book blog. And Damon is being a complete asshat. And Katie gives him snark right back. Good for you, girl. He finally gives her directions. And she's like, thank you. And then under her breath, mutters douchebag. <laughs> and he starts laughing and says, well, now that's not very ladylike, kitty cat. 
And she whips around and is like, don't ever call me that again. <laughs> He's all, what's well, better than calling somebody a douchebag? And she's like, you're right. That's too good a word for you. You're a dickhead. <laughs> And I'm just kidding. I love the snark between these two. Like, it is very, if you loved From Blood and Ash, you will love Lux just because the snark between Katie and Damon is, it's the best thing ever. So, anyway, while she's at the grocery store buying groceries, she runs into Dee, the sister, and Dee, you know, introduces herself and apologizes for Damon and when they get to the parking lot and Dee leaves, Katie looks up and there's like a freaking man in black watching her. Like the MIBs are all over this little BFE town in West Virginia. So, um, it's pretty creepy. <laughs> Dee comes over that afternoon and they kind of talk and Kat's like, you know, I kind of want to go to uh, a plant shop and get some plants and work on this flower bed out front. And Dee's like, hey, I'll help you. And so, they go to the hardware store, and when they come back, they're, like, working, you know, digging up the old stuff and scraping out the mulch and all that good stuff, which, if you have never worked in the yard, is hard work. And I think this must be based off of Jen, because Jen loves to do outdoor stuff. Like, she posts stuff all the time, and I'm like, God bless you, because every time I pull up in my driveway, I'm like, it's not anything that I enjoy doing. God bless you if you do. It's not my thing. So anyway, when they take a break, Damon actually gets the rest of the stuff out of the car and puts it up for them. So while they're working, Damon comes out of the house with no shirt on, on the phone. And if this is a, a, a quote from the book, but it's not anything Katie says. It's just something she thinks. Uh, she says, Beautiful face, beautiful body, horrible attitude. It was the holy trinity of hot boys. <laughs> and I actually have a glass that says that from the JLA shop. Uh, so he then proceeds to open his mouth and ruin it all and be a jerk because he's a sassy, dark-haired boy. And Dee has to apologize again. The next day, Katie is washing her car but can't reach the roof. And Damon comes over to help. And you're thinking, oh, okay, maybe he's not a complete and total monster. And then he tells her that he thinks he's supposed to apologize. And she's like, you you think? And he's like, yeah, D left town and hid my keys and told me I can't have them back until I make nice with you. So I'm going to take you swimming tomorrow. <laughs> and Kat's like, well, I think you can kiss your keys goodbye, bud, because I don't want to be nowhere around you because you're a jerk face. And... Uh, he stretches out on her porch steps and is like, I'll just camp out here until you agree to go. And she's like, well, enjoy your night on the steps because I'm not going. And as soon as she goes to go in the house, her mom comes out and is like, oh, what's going on? And Damon's like, oh, I was going to see if Katie wanted to go swimming tomorrow. And she's like, oh, Katie's not doing anything. And basically, like, hands her daughter over on a silver platter. Way to go, mom. Way to sell out your kid. <laughs> So, Damon, her mom leaves or goes back inside or whatever, and Damon, like, smirks at her and is like, I bet you 20 bucks you wear a one-piece. And Cass, Cat wears a red bikini just to spite him. Yes, she does. That's a theme in this book. Katie does something to spite Damon. So, the next day, they hike about 20 minutes and get to this beautiful little hidden lake that's got rocks in the middle, and there's more snark. And she gets in and swims to the rocks in the middle of the lake. And Damon is like talking smack and then swims underwater. And he's under for a long time. And Katie starts to get worried because she's like, you know, I really like Dee. And I would hate to have to be the one to tell her that her brother drowned. <laughs> so she's like screaming for Damon. And he finally pump, comes up and comes up with some kind of um, BS excuse of why he was underwater for so long. He's like, oh, I came up. You just didn't see me. Katie ain't stupid, Damon. So, anyway, he climbs up on the rocks, and he's being a jerk face. So, she is like, you know what? Screw this, and goes to leave. And I don't know if you've ever been hiking on wet rocks, but they're slippery. And Katie slips on the rocks and almost falls, and Damon has to, like, catch her. And then they kind of have this, like, moment, and you're like, ooh, that's more sexual tension. So, when they get back home, Matthew, their guardian, is there, and he and Damon kind of square off, and then they both go in the house and just leave Katie standing there, like, 
in the driveway like WTF. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> so a few days later, he shows up to take Katie hiking. And this is a quote actually from Damon. I've always found that the most beautiful people, truly beautiful people inside and out are the ones who are quietly aware of their effect. The ones who throw their beauty around, who waste what they have, their beauty is only passing. It's just a shell hiding nothing but shadows and emptiness. And it's like, oh, Damon's deep. He's actually got some depth there. It's not all snark and sassiness. <laughs> and while they're walking, he tells her about the Seneca Rocks and the story of Snowbird, which is apparently this uh, Native American, uh, like, Princess Kana, daughter of the chief, and she uh, climbed up to the Seneca Rocks and basically was like, whoever can make it up these rocks and can do the same things I can do is worthy of my hand. But if they can't, then they're not. And, and like several of them give up and some actually fall by the wayside. And one guy makes it almost to the top of the rocks where she's at and he starts to slip and fall. But Snowbird pulls him up and says, you know, you're, you're the closest. So uh, you get to be my husband. It comes up later in the book. That's why he tells her the story. And it's kind of this like cute moment because he asks Katie, like, what would you do? And she's like, well, I'd help him. I wouldn't let him fall to his death. Like, what kind of, <laughs> how would I be deserving of love if I let the guy fall to his death just because he couldn't do what I could do? So then a bear shows up. Katie freaks out. Who wouldn't? Closes her eyes. There's a bright light. And then she wakes up on the porch swing laying on Damon. And he tells her that she passed out and that he had to carry her home. And they kind of have this moment again. And then Dee shows up. And the next night, Dee and Kat are watching a movie. Kat wants to go to the library. And Dee's like, well, I've got company coming over. Why don't you just wait till tomorrow and I will go with you. But Kat, not knowing what's going on, is just like, well, yeah, but just, I mean, it's like a one stoplight town. I think I can find the library. And she goes on by herself and doesn't tell Dee she's going by herself. So, what do you think happens? She gets attacked by an Aram. Yep. Damon has to save her. She wakes up at the hospital. She passes out again. She wakes up at the hospital with her mom and Damon. Her mom is working. I mean, she's a nurse and like there's an accident. Other people come in and she can't leave to take Katie home. So, Damon and Dee are like, oh, we'll take her home. So, they do. And they're in the living room, I guess. And Katie falls asleep again on Damon again. And when she wakes up, he immediately reverts back to his jerk face self because he's Damon. <laughs> and school starts and uh, she has math class with Damon. She makes friends with these two girls named Lisa and Carissa. And they tell her about Dawson and Bethany. And she's kind of hurt because it's like, you know, she felt like she and Dee were pretty close. And why didn't Dee tell her about Bethany? When she gets to bio, the teacher is Matthew. D and Damon's guardian. He's really not their guardian. The DOD thinks he's their guardian, but they pretty much live on their own. At lunch, Kat goes to sit with D and Damon and the Thompsons. All the aliens are sitting together. Katie doesn't know they're aliens. She goes to sit with D because D's her, you know, BFF. And Ash, Damon's ex, is sitting in Damon's lap. And she's being a complete and total witch. I'm trying not to curse. She's, she's being a witch. And Damon is being a jerk right along with her. And says to her, says to Katie, you're not wanted here. Well, I'm pretty sure it's pretty clear that nobody wants you to sit here. You're not wanted here. Poor Dee is like in tears because Dee's just this little sweetheart. Cat. Cat. <laughs> grows the lady balls and dumps her food on Ash and Damon. And it is the best thing ever. Damon's actually laughing about it. After school, Dee apologizes to her and Kat asks her about Dawson's, like, why didn't you tell me? And Dee tells her, well, it just hurts too much to talk about. So the next day, Damon comes up to her at school or pokes her in the back with his pen. Like, he's always poking her. Like, he sits behind her in math, and he's always poking her in the back with a pen. And at one point in the book, she's like, I swear to God, if he pokes me one more time with that pen. <laughs> it just becomes this, like, theme through the book. It's hilarious. So, anyway, he pokes her in the back with a pen, and he's like, we need to talk after school. And she asks him about... Uh, 
all the weirdness. Like, they go hiking through the woods or whatever. And she asks him about all the weirdness. And he tries to, like, play it off and act like she's crazy. And uh, tells her not to get too close to D. That, basically, she's not good enough to be friends with D. D needs to be friends with people like her. And it hurts Kat's feelings. And Kat is about to cry. And she's mad. So, she is, she basically tells Damon, screw you. <laughs> and starts heading back to the house. And she's not paying attention. She walks out in the road and about gets pancaked by a freaking semi-truck. Damon, like, freezes time to save Cat. Cat runs off. Damon catches her. He tells her everything and tells her, you know, because of him using his powers, there is now a trace on her and that she's going to have to um, stay near him. And he tells her about Dawson and Bethany, like, you know, if the DOD finds out, you're going to disappear. If they find out, you know, about me, then D and I are going to disappear. So, like, we have to keep this quiet. You're going to have to stay around me so I can keep an eye on you to protect D from the arm that you would draw to us. So, now she has to hang out with Damon. And she can't stand him. Like, she can't stand him, but he's still hot kind of thing. So, anyway, more tension from them having to hang out. Simon, this guy that's in her math class who plays football, asks her to go to the homecoming dance. And she says yes. And Damon confronts her after school and's like, you shouldn't go with him. He's got a reputation. Like, you should stay away from him. And uh, to spite Damon, <laughs> Katie's going to the dance with Simon. Um, they go to get dresses together, Dee and Katie and Lisa and Carissa, and Dee actually picks out Katie's dress for her, and just happened to pick out Damon's favorite color. Did you get my wink wink? Uh, wink wink. So, when Simon comes to pick her up for the dance, he's like being all skeevy. Um, come find out he's already been drinking. When they get to the dance, he's like all handsy like, filling her up and stuff. Damon has to cut in to kind of save her. And Damon tells her, he's like, I'm taking you home. Like, you're not you're not going to that party. You're not hanging out with this, this dude anymore. I'm taking you home. And Katie is all like, you don't tell me what to do. And I was kind of, I was kind of mad at Katie. And I'm going to tell you why. I get it, right? 17-year-old Kim would have been the same way. I would have been like, you don't tell me what to do. If I want to go with Simon to the field party, I'm going to go with Simon to the field party. You don't tell me what to do. But as an adult, I look and go, you're putting yourself at risk to be raped, beaten, gang raped, who knows what, just to spite Damon because of the way he told you you shouldn't go to the party with Simon. Like, <laughs> Really? You, like, the old saying, you cut off your nose to spite your face. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway. But I get it because 17-year-old me would have done the same thing. So, Simon cuts back in and she goes with him to the field party to spite Damon. There's a thing. So, there's a thing. And at the field party, if you don't know what a field party is. So, in the country, somebody who lives on a farm... Once the field is cleared, we'll use that field to have field parties. And it is literally a bunch of people sitting around a bonfire drinking. There may be a cabin. There may be trucks a rocking. There may be uh, all kinds of things going on out in the field. There's even, I think there's even a country song about it. I don't remember who sings it. But anyway, it's, it's a thing that people do. So, they're in this field party. Simon is, like, basically trying to accost her. Like, he's trying to make out with her. He's filling her up. She's not into it, and he just keeps right on. And she tells him to stop and tries to get away. Damon saves her. He freezes. He grabs Simon and freezes him. Katie kicks him in the balls while he's froze. <laughs> yes. And no means no. And Damon... And when he unfreezes him, Damon's like, don't you ever even look at her or I will kill you. <laughs> so, he puts his jacket on Katie and goes to take her home. On the way home, Damon slams on brakes. There's three dudes in the middle of the road. Three air them. Yeah. So, Damon gives her his obsidian blade and he's like, when I tell you to run, you run. 
and he gets out and starts fighting the Aram, and he kills one, like, right off the bat, and then he's, like, circling the other two, and he's throwing light at them, and they're throwing globs of oil at him, and they're fighting, but Damon is starting to get wore out because he's fighting two guys, and uh, they grab him. They start draining him. He screams, and when he does, yeah, I was freaking out because it's just like, oh. And this is a reread. I have read this book before, but it was so long ago that I don't remember everything. And I'm just like, oh, not my baby. <laughs> so when he screams, something in Katie is like, no. And Katie, instead of running the other way, goes running for the Aram and stabs one of them and kills them. When she does, the other one runs off. And she goes to Damon and she's like, oh my God, are you okay? And they actually hug and you're like, are they turning the corner? They're going to be nice to each other. So, Damon's like, you're staying with us tonight, you know, because you got a trace on you. D is with the Thompsons because he told her stay with the Thompsons because they can keep her safe. And because they don't know if the other guy's going to follow them back to the house. So, they get back to the house and Damon puts Katie in the um, spare bedroom or whatever. And she's like, well, will you stay with me? Because she's still like shaking up, shaking up. And he's like, yeah, I'll stay with you. And they... When he gets in the bed, they're both kind of laying there like this, like, and it's really awkward. And Katie even says, this is really awkward. And he's like, yeah, it is. And they laugh and kind of have a moment and they start talking. And Katie starts with the, well, what if he shows up? What if this happens? What if that happens? And, you know, I've told you before, then what ifs will make you crazy? You can't do that to yourself. <laughs> you cannot because it doesn't end. There's no end to the what ifs. So, don't even start down that road. If you catch yourself doing it, like, stop your brain and go, like, no, we're not doing this and redirect. So, Damon kind of soothes her and's like, you know, Kat, it's okay. I'm not going to let anything happen to you. When she wakes up, she's laying on Damon again. And uh, she, she, I guess, moves or something. And when she does... He shifts, and he's on top of her, and he's, like, nuzzling her neck and speaking in his native language, and she gasps, and when she does, she wakes him up, and he leaves, acts like he's mad at her, and leaves. <laughs> so, when she goes downstairs, like, there's this whole freaking alien meeting going on with Matthew, Damon, D, and the Thompsons. And they're all, like, mad at Katie, like it's somehow Katie's fault. And uh, they, like, they want to turn her over to the DOD. And <laughs> Damon has to tell them how she saved him, how she killed the Aram, to get them to back off of the turn her over to the DOD idea. And he actually has to threaten Andrew, which, I mean, Andrew's been a jerk since Shadows, since the prequel. So, are we surprised? But then we're not really surprised. So, Adam, Dee's boyfriend, comes up with the idea of getting Katie to exert energy to get rid of her trace. So, Kat goes in the kitchen while they're all discussing her to get some water. And Ash comes in and corners her and is basically like, you know, Damon's going to get killed trying to protect you. And Kat, I think that kind of like sits in here with Kat. And Kat sneaks home because she's over the alien meeting already. And she goes to sleep on the couch. When she wakes up, Damon's at the door. And her mom is gone. And he wants to work off the trace, but it's raining. Sorry, I had the thing. <laughs> he wants to work off the trace, but it's raining. She's like, Damon, it's raining. Like, you know, let's just, let's worry about this tomorrow. Like, I don't feel like dealing with this today. And he gives her an obsidian blade and tells her, you know, to keep it on her. And he's like, why don't you just run around the house or do some jumping jacks or something? And she, like, gives him the stink eye. And he's like, we could, you know... Bow, chick, bow, bow. And she's like, no, not if you were the last male thing on the planet. And he's like, oh, you're, don't even start. You're attracted to me. And they start snarking. And in the middle of the snarking, Damon kisses her. And then they start making out. And I mean, it is hot. It is hot, y'all. And like literally, because they start blowing up stuff in the house. <laughs> like they melt Katie's laptop and all the lights blow. And, like, they're making out. His shirt comes off. Her shirt comes off. And then he just stops and looks at her and goes, See, you're barely glowing now. Gets up, gets his shirt, and leaves. Yeah. Yeah, dick move. Yeah. 
yeah. So, Kat is mad, understandably so, and she avoids Damon and Dee, um, which is not Dee's fault, and she kind of realizes that, like, she realizes that. She has this moment, like, you know, it's not fair for me to avoid Dee because her brother's a jerk. It's not her fault. And Dee actually finally confronts her about her avoiding her, and they're like, and they agree to have a movie night to kind of make up and spend some time together. Well, while they're having a movie night, Damon calls D because he and the Thompsons are out patrolling, looking for this last Aram that ran off. Damon calls D and's like that Aram is heading that way. So Kat thinks about what Ash said, and she's like, I don't want to be the reason something happens to D, and D will get hurt trying to protect me from the Aram. So she tells D, she's like, light me up. Get me glowing, and I will lead the Aram away. I'll lead him to where the field party was. Damon can meet me there and take care of the Aram. And Dee doesn't want to do it, but Cat's like, Dee, it's the only way. You know, otherwise, he's going to know where you live. He's going to know where I live. So, Dee lights her up. <laughs> she leaves and heads for where the field party was. Damon calls her on her phone, because I guess Dee's called Damon. Damon calls her, is fussing her out. And while they're on the phone, Barrick, Baruch, uh, however you say his name, it's B-A-R-R-U-K, U-C-K, shows up and uh, grabs Katie out of the car and Katie tries to stab him. He grabs her arm and breaks it and then he kicks her and breaks her ribs and then he starts feeding on her, draining her and Katie's a human so she's not going to last long. Damon shows up. He starts fighting uh, Barrack, Baruch, however you say his name. D shows up to try and help Katie. He fire. He sees D. Knows that's like Damon's weakness. So uh, the Aram fires at D. Hits D. Uh, he goes to hit her again, but Cat sees what he's going to do, and she takes the hit. Cat and D end up on the ground. Then Damon gets hit, and he ends up on the ground next to Cat and D, and he grabs Cat's <clears throat> hand and is going to use, basically, he's going to try and use the last of the energy that he has left in his life, <laughs> like he's dying, to heal Katie. But Katie knows that she's beyond saving, like she knows like something bad is broken inside of her, and like, so she's like, no, and she grabs D's hand, and like, is just like willing them to like fight and live. And all of a sudden, this light like arcs from Damon to D, and then it hits Katie in the chest. And Katie like looks at the Aram and like it just puts everything she has into it and lights him up. And he's just like obliterated, like he explodes. <laughs> and but Kat is still on the ground and she's dying from her injuries. So Damon tells D to go get Adam, and Dee doesn't want to go, but he, like, convinces her to go. So, as soon as Dee leaves, he does what Dawson did with Bethany, and he, like, puts his forehead to Kat's forehead and, like, pours his light into her uh, to the point that they can hear each other's thoughts. And then they actually kiss. And I know they kissed earlier, but that don't count. This one counts because this is, like, an actual real tender with emotions kiss and the other one was Damon being a douche so it didn't count so the it, the next day or whatever Damon is gone or next few days or whatever we don't know Damon is gone he and the Thompsons have been out kind of combing the area to make sure there's no more air when he comes back he says something smart ass of course because it's Damon and he's a smart ass and Katie kind of like smacks his chest and when she does she's like wait a minute and she realizes she puts her other hand on her chest and she realizes that their hearts are beating in time with each other and she's like our hearts are beating the same and Damon's like huh and now Damon has the bright idea that now that they're connected that they should be together and Kat is like no I want somebody to be with me because they love me, not because we've got some weird alien connection. <laughs> so, she's like, no, and goes to leave, and Damon's like, Kat, I hope you know I love a challenge, <laughs> and Kat flips him off and says, so do I, Damon, so do I, <laughs> and that's where the book ends, <laughs> with snark, as it should, the book ends with snark, as it should, so... 
that is Obsidian. That is the first Lux book. Uh, I love this series. Like I said, it's my favorite series. I. It used to be a tie between Lux, A Court of Thorns and Roses, and Mortal Instruments. But now, I have to say that it's a tie between A Court of Thorns and Roses and Lux. Because rereading this, I have just fell in love with it all over again. And uh, I really want to go to West Virginia now. <laughs> Okay, so we'll see you guys next time for what will be, I think, Onyx is the next book. So, we will continue on in the Lux series. See you guys later. Bye.